Hi, and welcome to our next lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to introduce you to yet another new clause in Query SQL. You can see what that clause is going to be by the title of the fiddle in the upper left of the screen, the Fetch Clause. So the Fetch Clause is really useful. I think the best way to show you why it's useful is to an example. So I have a query here in the upper right. I'm selecting star from users ordered by age, offset zero. So we know that gets us all the rows of the table, all the columns. I've put offset zero here just to have that in there so you can see where fetch goes in the order of the clauses. But as you know, offset zero doesn't actually do anything, but we'll leave that there for now. So let's say that our task is we want to see all the data in the users table for our youngest three users. Well, we can certainly see our youngest three users by looking at the table here. So the one confusing thing is Sylvester and Beth are both tied at age 45. So which one should be in the youngest three users? Well, Fetch is going to give us a solution to that. But first, I'm going to show you the standard way to write Fetch. So we write it Fetch first. You always need to have first there. And then we're going to put three row. I'll show you in a second why you don't need to type rows. Three row, and we'll start out with only. So this is sort of the standard way of writing it. So let's run this. Notice we get the first three rows, and Sylvester is there, and Beth is not. And the one thing I want you to think about is given that our order by clause age does not produce a unique combination of values. Sylvester showing here is really just a random occurrence. We know from previous lessons that it could be in the future that Beth is the one that shows here. And if you really think about it, when someone says, show me the data of, your, of my youngest three users on the website, do they really want to exclude anyone else whose age is less than or equal to any other age on this list. It seems kind of arbitrary to exclude Beth or anyone else whose age is 45. And that's why uh, Fetch has this really useful feature and you just change only to with ties and run that again. And now we're gonna get all the users that we want to get. So anyone who's tied with the age of the last row on the list, which was Sylvester, is going to show as well. So then we'll be sure that everyone we see on the list um, is represented from everyone in the database that shares these ages. Hope that makes sense. So we're not leaving anyone out that has an age less than or equal to anyone else on the list. All right, I told you I was going to show you why we don't actually need to type rows. We can just type row, and that's because there's a really useful little thing where you can just type fetch first row only. It's going to only get you the very first row, so you don't even need to put a number in. That's why you can just type row or rows even when you do put a number in. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of a bug. If I do fetch first row with ties right now in Postgres 13 beta, it does give an error. So what you can do is just go ahead and type in a one here, just the same place we typed the three before, and then it'll work with ties. And I'll show you in a second that that does work with ties as well. I do want to emphasize the order of operations. We do have offset before fetch. And that reflects the order that it's processed. So we're processing from, then we're processing select. We know that from previous lessons, then order by, then we process offset and then fetch. And that will matter in the next example that I show you. So let's change this to order by age, descending, descending, we're going to type offset one, then we're going to fetch first one row with ties. Okay. So in this example, the with ties does not make a difference. And that's because the offset has already run. So that's why the order of processing really matters. 
we have two users that have an age of 45, and since we're sorting descending, they would be at the top of the list. So we skipped one of those with the offset one. But because we already skipped that one, and that's processed before the fetch, the with ties doesn't do anything. So we can change this to only and get the same result. However, let me show you an example where it does make a difference. And that is when we look at how this function works with nulls, or how this clause works with nulls. Like with most things, we want to see if anything changes with nulls. So we'll change Sylvester's age back to null. We'll also temporarily change Jim's age to null. We know that if we sort descending, null is going to be at the top of the list. So we've got two rows at the top of the list here. We're going to change the offset to zero. And then we're going to fetch first one row only. And you'll see that gets us one user, Sylvester. And then we'll change it to with ties. And now we get them both. So that shows you that even with nulls, the with ties works. I hope it's clear how that works with regard to offset and so forth. And so this is a really useful new clause. Now you've got five clauses in SQL that you've learned. Select from, order by, offset, and fetch. And we'll change Jim's age back to 12 before we finish. And we'll leave Sylvester's age at null. And now we're ready for the next lesson. We'll see you then.